Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on a Sunday morning here in Melbourne. Of course, uh, let's go across to the States in particular, of course, go to Dartmouth uh, Women's Basketball Team. And their season will all get underway in uh, just about a month's time now. And of course, uh, we've got two very special guests, of course, both of them the Australian uh, players over there. And they join us right now. And of course, their name is Rosie and Ali. Thanks uh, both of you for joining us. Thank you for having us. I'll get both of you to introduce yourselves anyway. And what position both of you will be playing on the court this coming season? Um, so I'll introduce myself a little bit. Um, I'm a uh, sophomore currently, so class of 23 at Dartmouth. Um, my club I came from in Melbourne was Knox Raiders. Um, I play like a shooting guard, a two. Um, yeah. Um, I'm from Newcastle, Australia, and I play for the Newcastle Hunters. That was my club back home. Um, at Dartmouth, I'm a class of 2024, so I'm a freshman this year, and I play a forward. Uh, I guess due to the pandemic, obviously um, there hasn't been any games that would normally be scheduled uh, right now. I guess how difficult has that been to... I guess, haven't played any games um, between, I guess, the last game to, I guess, I think the first one's around late December. Um, so our season got cancelled this year. Um, was released on Twitter about a week or two ago. So we won't be having um, a non-conference or a conference schedule. Um, so the first time we will step out on the court together, Rosie and I will be next November. Um, but we are, we do have practice. So we have scheduled practices for the next, um, year or so, but it has been really tough just not knowing where, you know, your team's at and being out of practice as a whole unit. Yeah. And especially whenever we can practice, we're under COVID restrictions at the moment. So it's not necessarily game-like or reflective of a typical year at Dartmouth. I guess my next question I was going to ask is about the conference play, but obviously Ali mentioned before that. Um, the whole year is cancelled. I guess, did that come as a shock to both of you? And I guess, how disappointing is it uh, to not be played at all? So for me, I, I don't think it was necessarily a shock. I think that the Ivy League, um, specifically out of all the conferences, definitely takes into account data and um, really prioritises our health and safety. Um, and since COVID cases are definitely rising in the US at the moment, um, I think I think it was a smart decision. It's always hard as a player to have your season cancelled, but I think they had our health and safety as a top priority. So it, I don't think it was a surprise. Yeah, I am very similar. I guess the best word to describe it is disappointing um, because no athlete wants their season cancelled. And I think the hardest part for me particularly is having to watch other conferences play. Um, like game started two days ago and that's all I've been watching the last two two days and it's just hard, but yeah. Now, I don't know you, uh, you two will be able to answer this next question, but I guess due to the um, season being cancelled completely, are you are both of you eligible to have an extra year? Uh, yeah, so we're both eligible to have an extra year that might not necessarily be at Dartmouth. Um, they have different eligibility rules when it comes to sport. Um, so we both have an extra year to play wherever we would like, you know, a fifth year which is similar to everyone in the country right now gets an extra year because of COVID, even if they are playing, um, which is which is quite crazy. Just uncharted territory, I guess. But yeah, I know that um, I'll definitely be looking to use that fifth year and try and stretch my eligibility because, you know, I love playing, so why not? Last time we had you on the show was after Knox Raiders game at Broadmeadows a couple of years ago now. Um, but my question to both of you is, um, have you have both of you been back home yet uh, this year due to COVID? And um, how good was it to at least come home for at least you know a couple months? This being my first year, I arrived on campus in September, and I did a term at Dartmouth, and then I'm actually staying with one of my teammates in Florida at the moment. Um, I don't think I'll be going back to Australia until the Australian winter, just because I think if I do go back, even if I'm not on campus, that I'll struggle to get back into the country with COVID restrictions. So I'm just staying in the US for now. Um, 
yeah, so I got to come home. Obviously, I'm second year, so I came home um, over the, like the our summer break, Melbourne's winter break. Um, and it was obviously a different experience because I wasn't coming home to see everyone that I wanted to see because of COVID. Um, but it was very nice to be home with my family. I was super eager to get back here and just start practicing again. So like Rosie, I won't be heading home till I really don't know when, because as a sophomore at Dartmouth, you get to be on campus in summer. Um, so I have no idea when my next home visit is. Now let's talk a bit about the team itself. Um, obviously, you know, with no season at all, uh, and obviously I'm sure both you're on different parts of the country, um, not at, at campus, I guess, how have you been trying to do training and also, I guess, study? Is that, has that been difficult? Um, I mean, online study is never easy, especially at a school like Dartmouth. Um, but I know that our coaches have been super focused on getting whatever work at, workouts they can to us, whether it's you're by yourself and you work out with a chair and you don't have a, like a hoop or... Like I've been, I'm in Iowa right now and I've been with a couple of my teammates and I know Rosie's been on campus. So we've been able to do, you know, workouts with four people. Um, but I think the balance of trying to find spaces to work out in, times to work out in that work with online class has been super difficult. And I can't imagine what that has been like for Rosie being a freshman and trying to navigate that. Yeah, so um, freshmen were allocated an on-campus term at Dartmouth since they weren't bringing all the student population to campus. And so um, I guess coming in academically and doing school online was definitely a challenge like everyone else. And then in terms of balancing that with workouts, we actually had restricted hours. So instead of, I think it's typically like 20 hours a week, we only actually had uh, two hours a week dedicated to basketball practice. So that that was a lot less than we're used to, but in terms of kind of trying to get in extra work in other areas. It was very difficult with COVID restrictions, especially because a lot of the hoops were taken down in different public parks. So that was definitely frustrating. And that obviously raises in Florida. Um, Ali, you mentioned that you're in Iowa at the moment. I guess, uh, uh, was it easy to re reallo um, re reallocate uh, your, uh, I guess, place of uh, where you, we're going to stay for a while because I think campus is in New Hampshire. Yeah um, so campus is on the far east coast just out near Boston. Um, I've actually been in Iowa this whole term so I didn't go back to campus. Um, a couple of um, my classmates and I we tried to create like a bubble um, where we could have you know unlimited practice hours which has worked out really well for us. Um, but I'm actually leaving here in a couple of days to go to Washington on the West Coast because my brother lives there. So this whole like last term has been a bit of a roller coaster of just living out of suitcases and trying to make it work. But I guess that's just what you do um, if, when you want to have a place to practice and study. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely been a lot of living out of a suitcase for me as well, especially because I can't exactly go home very easily. So I've just been fortunate to have supportive teammates who will let me stay with them. And while I'm not on campus, I'll just be with them and probably doing a bubble similar to what Ali's class did. Uh, now, the question I want to ask both of you is, have both of you actually caught up in person? <laughs> Um, we've met in person once on my visit to Dartmouth in March and other than that we've never been with each other in person. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping that next term we can maybe see each other if we if my bubble decides to come and visit campus but um, obviously due to COVID it's very difficult at the moment to kind of be able to do that safely. Now, the other question I want to ask both of you is, have either of you played against each other at all? Because you both of you are from different states. We've tried to figure this out. Um, <laughs> I think we, we maybe, I don't know, like, I did a lot of, we, we all do, like, tournaments in Adelaide and, like, New South Wales. So, like, maybe when we were really young, but I don't think we have, like, so I, I was never, like, um, Rosie played in a lot of state teams for New South Wales when she was, like, Eight, under 18 16 that's right Rosie yeah yeah I never was like uh, like in those Vic squads so I didn't get to play against her in those tournaments but I think maybe we'll be younger maybe we'll cross 
the one thing that I think could have been is under 14s nationals where you play for your club. I think that maybe that could have been a time where yeah, we... that, that probably would have been. Yeah. Ali, you've been there for now a year. Now, obviously, this would have been your second year. Um, and obviously, Rosie's been, this has been her first year. Have you given Rosie any advice on how to sort of cope with, uh, I guess, what's uh, what to be like away from home? I think I've been helping him with getting to know the Dartmouth system more than, you know, everyone gets homesick. That's just a part of it. Some people, some people get it worse um, than others. But Dartmouth is such a unique place and learning how to, you know, transition to Dartmouth. I think we've had quite a few conversations just on what to bring, um, just, you know, how to handle certain things, like where we're going over break. We, we keep in touch a lot just because, you know, we have very similar problems and things to talk about um but yeah no I, I don't I don't I think the weather would be something that Rosie would be missing right now but she's in Florida and I'm in the freezing cold so I guess she's the last <laughs> one. <laughs> How did both of you get involved in basketball? Why did you choose it? Um so for me I as a kid growing up I always played a lot of different sports. I chose basketball and only um and decided to cut out all the other sports at age 11 um, something just drew me to it. I loved how competitive it was. I love team sports in general. And there's just something special about basketball, I guess, that it can just take you so many places. Like I never would have thought that I would be at Dartmouth for university. Um, so yeah, that definitely had a big role in it. I just think that basketball really gives you an opportunity to work on. It's more than just like a, a game with the ball. It really helps you to work on communication skills, leadership skills, um, working in team environments and just really just provides you with amazing opportunities for academics as well. Yeah. Um, when did I start basketball? I think I was like triple bottom age under 12. So I was very, very small when I started. Um, my brother, older brother played, still plays. My brother, my dad coached. So like basketball was something that was just going to happen. Um, I was a bit different. I started another sport later. So um, I played touch rugby from... I think maybe like 15 I started um, and that was actually a sport that I took off in and like made a lot of the state teams that I wasn't making in basketball and got a lot of opportunities that way um, which I like loved and like kept my fitness up for basketball but then when an opportunity like going to college comes along like that was the sport for me I knew that that was the, like the path I had to take. Both mentioned right at the start what position you both play on the court. If you had a preferred position where you like to convince your current coaches to put you, where would that be? I don't think I would. If anyone knows me, they knows they know that I don't really want to go anyway inside the three point line. Uh -huh. And I rather stay there. So I don't think I would ever change. Maybe it would be fun to be like Rose's position once in a while, but then I'd probably get hit and I'd be like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm <laughs> Um, yeah, for me, I'm staying at a forward. I think I really like it. Um, Wait, you don't want to come a shooting guard? As if. What, PG? Okay. <laughs> I love, like, interesting. Really physical. Every, everywhere in basketball is really physical, but I think, like, the forward position especially, I really like it. I love rebounding, so it suits me. Uh, any highlights throughout both your basketball journeys so far? Um... Rosie hasn't obviously been able to play in the green, but I think my highlight, I think my highlights have just been like freshman year playing in conference. I didn't play a huge amount of non-conference games. I was still getting a feel for, you know, the Dartmouth system and playing at that level and getting my fitness where I needed to be for conference play. But I think playing against like Penn or Brown, they were like, the two games that like I felt like I really came out of my shell um, and just like, you know, felt that love for the game that I felt through juniors and just got me really excited, obviously, for next season, unfortunately. But yeah, I think that was probably the highlights for me. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of my own basketball highlights, like Ali said, I don't really have much Dartmouth experience to really bring to that. Um, but definitely just being... Um, given the opportunity to come to Dartmouth in terms of basketball was def has definitely been a highlight in my career. And then I guess prior to that, um, being invited to an Australian development camp in 2018, that was, that was definitely a highlight for me. Um, making different state teams was definitely a highlight to me. And then um, probably winning all schools nationals in 2018 as well. 
um, for for New South Wales. That was also another highlight. Um, but yeah, definitely next season I'll be able to bring a lot more Dartmouth specific highlights, hopefully. Now, very similar question, but this time in your time playing basketball in Australia. Um, I'm trying to think, but that feels like so long ago. <laughs> I feel so old. Um, I'd say some of my highlights, interestingly enough, were probably when I was like super young. So I played um, at Melbourne Tigers when I was like under 14s and just like the classic tournaments and like the Adelaide tournaments, just like those trips that you take with your team, they were like the best experiences for me. And that's what like kept me in the sport, like living with like your team for the week in like a different state and then getting up every day and going to play. It's very similar to what we do here. Um, so I think that was probably, you know, my highlights back home. Yeah. For me, I think I already touched on a few and then obviously like playing for Newcastle, um, that's always been great. I, I played for Newcastle every year since I started playing basketball and I've just loved it. All, I've met some amazing people from it and like Ali said, I love like going away for team trips on the weekend and just things like that. Going on camps and sleeping on the floor in basketball stadiums, it just doesn't get any better. <laughs> uh, what does the sport of basketball mean to both you, especially being there at Dartmouth? Um, I think to me, the biggest one, I've touched on this a couple of times, but to me, it's opportunity. Like at the end of the day, I wouldn't be at this school if it wasn't for basketball. Obviously, like Rosie and I have worked very hard in school as well. And that's what helped us get to this school. Um, but just knowing that after Dartmouth is finished, that our coach, Coach Bell, has built like the best program that I was like, oh, alumni is so strong. So like you will be a part of you'll be a part of Dartmouth women's basketball after you graduate. Um, so that's the biggest thing for me, knowing that I'll always have a family to come back to and always have opportunities that came from the school I went to. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I, I just think basketball provides such an amazing opportunity to, you know, study at one of the best schools in the world, all the way on the other side of, of the planet, actually. Um, and I, I would really encourage like other young athletes to look into the college pathway um yeah it's it's amazing the networking that will come from Dartmouth just for like after our basketball career ends we'll we'll never be without the Dartmouth family so it's great how important has your respective clubs back here in Australia obviously for you Rosie it's Newcastle and for you Alex for Knox um how important have they been throughout your basketball journey obviously I know Ali also played for Melbourne but but I guess I'm talking about your recent clubs um, I guess for me, Newcastle, um, the, the coaches really, really had a huge influence on the way I played the game. Um, often at times when I, I wasn't sure my potential, they always believed in me. Um, a few specific coaches that, that really just always had my back and really like pushed me and encouraged me to go beyond what I thought I could do. So that definitely developed me not only as a player, but as a person. I think my, my club to me means like the people there and um, the teams I've been surrounded by and I've really met some amazing people so that it, it's definitely had a huge role in who I am. Yeah, um, Knox and Melbourne are only two of the four clubs I played at, <laughs> just to preface this answer. Um, I was only at Knox for a couple of years for like under 18s in Youth League, like my last couple of years being back home. But I think being at that club kind of just pushed me to be a more dynamic player and come out of my shell a little bit. Obviously transitioning from youth league is very different to 18s, brings that like energy up and that um, physicality up, which definitely got me prepared more to play over here because it's it's way more physical. Um, but I mean, I'm sure you know um, Robbie Baldwin. He was a big part in um, just pushing me to be better and always pushing me to be at a level where I could play at somewhere like Dartmouth. Um, so, you know, there's, there have been a lot of people along my <laughs> um, junior's journey um, being at so many different clubs. But, yeah, that, that's definitely been a huge thing. He's just pushed me to be better. Now, I know this is going to be the most serious question I'm going to ask, but do either of you have any future ambitions in basketball past college? Yes. Um, 
So for me, Newcastle's actually hoping to establish a WNBL side within the next couple of years. So I would love to come back and maybe be a development player for them for a bit and then to represent Newcastle in the WNBL would just be awesome. I would love that. Um, I've also got basically an open mind to any other opportunities that I might get like in Europe or anywhere else in the world. I just think it's an amazing opportunity to travel, get life experience and play basketball, which I love. So yeah, I've definitely got my um, options open for that. Yeah. Um, very similar to Rosie. I think Europe offers just a great experience for female basketball players. Obviously, obviously the wage gap is something that's very talked about in um, sport and everybody in women's sport especially basketball knows that playing in Europe pays better than playing in a lot of other places in, in the world um, but for me I think my focus once graduating is school um, definitely looking on to graduate degrees and potentially law school if I can <laughs> put in the <laughs> good energy out there but um, that's a big focus for me so if basketball comes with that out of school, then that's a bonus. But for me, um, school is probably number one coming out of Dartmouth. Uh, what would be your advice to kids out there, especially here in Australia, that are thinking about coming over to college and uh, play play ball there? Um, I think maybe this, this will be a different take from Rosie, just because we've had different experiences. But for me, obviously not making teams that a lot of kids do make in juniors that give them the attention for schools over here it's about putting in the work outside so as much as you can getting on the court with I know I used to do individuals with different coaches and just do everything I can outside of like not making those teams and then film is a huge part of recruiting especially being on the other side of the world having as much film as you can to show coaches your ability is super important. Even it's now coming into America because coaches can't go watch high school kids play because of COVID and they're seeing how hard it is to get recruited just over film. Um, so for me, that was a huge thing. My dad was, you know, super supportive and would film everything he could and put together my tape and just recruiting wise, that was huge for me. So my biggest advice is do the work off the court and film everything. <laughs> Um, my advice as someone who, as, as a young junior, I, I always knew about the college pathway and I was never really sure if it was for me. Um, definitely like what Ali said, make sure you have film anyway. Even if you're not sure, have film, like no matter what, because if you decide last minute and don't have any film, it will be a lot more difficult. So definitely having film is really crucial. And then I guess just understanding that college is, is, is more than just, you know, dribbling a ball around a court. It's definitely about the larger game of basketball and then the larger like life experience and academic opportunities that it can provide for you because really like to to get to get an education at one of the best schools in the world is just an opportunity that is amazing and if, if it can come to you through basketball then you may as well and you just learn all of these great life skills as well so I feel like college is definitely a pathway that I would recommend to younger athletes back at home um, and it also just really focusing on on schools that that you like outside of the basketball um, realm because you're going there to live to play basketball and to study so you really should consider all three of those when when picking a school definitely yeah just to add on to that quickly sorry um a big part of the academics is a lot of kids don't realize is that like your grades are from year nine to twelve so put the work in in year nine and year ten where it's easy and then you know do the best in year 11 and 12 it's not you know glide through there and then really work hard in year 12 it's it's a it's a four-year effort um and if you want to get an opportunity at good schools like you know in the ivy league and things like that then that's super important now let's finish on a couple of lighthearted questions about your teammates or even uh obviously uh, both your times here in in australia uh who had the most embarrassing moment on the court by any of your teammates other either in Dartmouth or back home? The classic embarrassing moment on the court is always like an air ball. Um, we have, so we have as a team, if you, um, on like a free throw, if you like miss an offense, like a, a defensive rebound off a free throw, we're running. So like, that's always embarrassing when you go into team film and you know it's coming 
and you know what's being played to everyone. I think that's the biggest thing is like when you know you've made like a really bad mistake and you go into you go into film, you know, after the weekend of the game and you're okay, I know this is coming up for everyone to see, just sitting there a little anxiously and then it comes up and you're like, okay, we're running for that one. So I think that's that's a really big one. Yeah, I, I honestly can't think of too many, I guess. Um, in terms of Dartmouth, I'll, I'll be able to answer that next season, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully not, if it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ali, you just mentioned about that. Um, have you, uh, you know, advised Rosie what to not do to make sure you don't run? Um, I'm sure she'll learn. Um, <laughs> I, definitely, I definitely will be telling her before we practice because, you know, we all run. It's not just one. So if we can avoid, if we can avoid me running, that would be great. Um, <laughs> but no, I think... I think we'll definitely, as soon as you come into Dartmouth, you, you learn pretty quickly what, what you run for and what you don't run for. So, you know, being on time, no, not making silly decisions and then you'll be fine. But yeah, definitely we'll be telling her so I don't have to run. <laughs> now, who's the comedian there at Dartmouth first? Okay, I'm going to say, I think Rosie will agree with me. That's one, even though she's only met her once. I'm going to say Karina Mitchell. She is a 23 from Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, one of the most eccentric people people I've ever met. Um, it's got to be her or um, another one of my classmates, Kai Corona from um, California. Yeah, I would, I would definitely have to agree. Um, I remember like the first time I met um, like Ali, Ali's class, I remember like Karina and Kai would just slide down snow on their tummies and just things like that, just immediately. <laughs> now, similar question, but I guess your teammates back home. I remember there's a video of Georgia Baldwin trying to like dive on the ball and the ball like, rolls, <laughs> and rolls under her stomach. I don't yeah. know if you remember, but it rolls under her stomach and she like came yeah. down. And she like scorpions her back. That was probably that was a really good one. We watched that a couple of weeks after that, but yeah. That's right. Um for me it'd have to be one of my teammates who played with me in Newcastle for a season, Serena Waters. Um she's currently at a junior college over here at the moment as well. And she was just a clown. Like I remember any camp that we ever met, went to, she was having everyone just cracking up on the floor, like just doing the weirdest things literally all the time. So probably her. I know this social media thing called TikTok. So the question I want to ask both of you is, any good singers and dancers in the, in the team we should know about? So this is actually a good question for us That's because <laughs> the current challenge um, taking place between um, the four teammates from my class and the four teammates from Ali's class on TikTok. So we're basically challenging each other with um, the same TikToks and getting the coaches to vote who which class did it better. So... Yeah, I've got to say my class is better, but I think Ali would disagree, so. <laughs> the, only reason, the only reason I would disagree is because it's currently 1-0 our way, and I know they, <laughs> the vote was also an almost sweep. The only reason they got one vote is because it was a pity vote and the coaches didn't want it to be a sweep. But, you know, you guys have the chance to come back, so that's all that really matters. <laughs> All right, well, I might have to ask that question a little bit later on, uh, maybe early next year, uh, to figure out who, who came on top of there. Uh, I have to ask then, who's actually in your class doing these TikToks with you? Me, I've got three other teammates in my class. Um, I've got Cameron from New Jersey, Carrington from Tennessee, and Mia from Minnesota. So, yep, it's all four of us doing these TikToks, and we're a force to be reckoned with, so watch out. <laughs> okay calm down um <laughs> um we're also a class of four so it's um I mentioned before Karina from Charlotte North Carolina Kaya from um California and then Emma Cook from the Midwest in Iowa the this is the family I'm currently staying with they are the loveliest people so shout out to them <laughs> but yeah no I think I think the rhythm thing might be the class of 24's issue they're just not in. They're just not in sync. <laughs> like we are. They haven't had. To be fair, they haven't had the time to just, you know, really get to know each other and be in sync. So maybe next year they'll they'll pick it up. But it's it's not the same. Well, uh, 
Now, is there anyone on the team that just plainly forgetful? I don't want to put myself on blast, but I know if it was my, I know if it was the rest of my team, they would be saying me. Because I am very bad with this stuff, just remembering anything. Um, probably shout out to Veronica Kelly. She's a junior. Um, she has she has her forgetful moments, just like me. But I don't know. I haven't haven't really had any time with the the freshmen yet. So I'm sure there's one one in one in their class. There has to be one in every class. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we've had anyone being forgetful yet. We're pretty good with um reminding each other, being keeping each other accountable. Um, we we kind of had to do that since it was only us four staying on campus. Um, so yeah, we haven't had any of those moments yet, but we'll see. Either of you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? Oh, I kind of have one, kind of. So I use I sometimes wear like a long sleeve under my um, like a white long sleeve under like our white uniforms and green under our green, and I'll never warm up in it. It's weird. Like I'll put it on after we come out of like the first part of warm up when we're ready to play. It's a really weird thing. It's like when everyone's hyping each other up, I'll just have my moment where I just need to like calm down and like get ready. Um, but that isn't very interesting. I'd say the best not pre-game, but just games like superstition that I've personally seen in our team is um, we call her Dougie. Um, she's a junior this year. She eats a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at halftime every game. Like, I don't know how she does it. I don't know how she doesn't throw up, but like every time we're sitting there waiting for the coach to come in halftime, she's just like shoving down this peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And it is hilarious. For me, I don't know if I have any like specific superstitions. Um, I I like to uh, look good, play good, so I have my hair all sleek. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have to make sure it's really like satisfying, so it doesn't like annoy me. Um, but yeah, that, that's probably the only thing I have. <laughs> have you convinced any of your teammates over there to come down and, and and play, or even visit you down here in Australia? I think that every single one of our teammates would love to come to Australia. Um, I know my class is already coming as soon as we graduate. Like that's a trip that has been, is being planned is in the books. Um, I definitely think, I know that um, some alums were looking at even coming back in trying to play like um, WNBL and, you know, senior, senior basketball. So I think, I think definitely after Dartmouth, you'll see quite a few, um, quite a few of our teammates come and visit, if not trying to play. Yeah, um, that's the same with my class. They're already trying to plan a visit um, to Australia in one of our breaks that we have while we're at school. So that should be fun. They're already saying how they want to see all the crazy animals, like the great white shark. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely they all want to come. So it should be cool. And we'll finish off quickly with the last one, which is uh, have any of your teammates try to put the Australian accent on and how's that travelling? Well, not too good. I've got to say it's not too good. Um, I really haven't been impressed. You know, the effort's there. The effort is definitely there. Um, sometimes when I talk, I can hear like a little, almost feels like I've got a little parrot like sitting next to me as they try to repeat my And it's just, it always reverts back to some type of like, English accent or just even like sometimes like a little bit like New Zealander um but yeah they just can't nail the Aussie accent it's just it's too much for them I think <laughs> yeah I um I've definitely been slowly teaching my class just just a few phrases to try and get them get the get them sounding a little better I haven't heard I have not heard a good one yet that's the thing I haven't heard one good Australian accent from an American person in my whole time being here but I'm really hoping that somebody, somebody in our team one day gets it. That's what I'm really praying. Just like a one sentence. It sounds good. I know Karina, my teammate says mate every day. And it drives <laughs> me insane because she says it like might, like a really country person. Like that's how she says it. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping people get better because it's bad. Yeah. My, my classmates have a few sayings I like to say, like they, they all use reckon now, like I reckon. <laughs> I try to use it like that and some of them even say keen like I'm keen for this or something they think that's so funny as well you'll notice them start saying like some of the things you say like when I say I'm gonna I, I say I'm gonna ring someone but like they say call they don't really say like I'm gonna ring someone 
And the other day, Karina was just like saying, oh, I'm going to ring mom. And she was like, wait. Yeah. So, you know, it, it happens. We all say like, I'll start saying some American things and I'll catch myself and I'm like, oh, well, don't do that. And yeah, yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> now, of course, my final question I want to ask uh, both of you is, um, now, have either of you tried the American accent and how's that traveling? Okay, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say we're pretty good. My my teammates say I'm pretty good. I think it's easier to be fair. I think it's easier for us to do an American accent than it is for Americans to do an Australian accent. I don't know why that is. Um, but my teammates have told me I have a de- I have a decent one when like I try. I think the the typical like accent I go to though is like a sorority girl. Like that's the easiest way to <laughs> to do it. Like I don't have I can't do like a normal American accent. It just automatically goes to this really preppy sorority girl like that's the only way I know how to do it so I just stick with that one really yeah my teammates have said I do a pretty good American accent as well um it's like a party trick whenever we meet any person like Rosie do the American accent so what like, is that? they do that to me too and I'm like no, I don't really need to do this right now it's not the time yeah but I think it's just because like we grew up watching American movies so we hear it so much more um but yeah, I, I can I can do a pretty good American accent, I think. So I'm just waiting for someone to be able to do an Australian at this point. Mm-hmm. Do either you want to give us an example of an uh, American accent? Uh, absolutely not. There is no <laughs> chance. I'll okay. save that. I'll save them onto my senior year. I'll really I'll really get it down, really right, and then I'll I'll, I'll maybe I'll maybe tell some people see how I sound. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I can. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna crumble under the pressure. I think. <laughs> you wanna you wanna order some Chick Fil A? Have you had Chick Fil A yet? No, I honestly haven't even had Chick Fil A. I yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. That's a, that's the reason, real reason I'm here is Chick Fil A, and you haven't even had. <laughs> Oh, one funny thing is when they try to say, like, my fir- my full first name's Rosanna. And so when they try to say my first name, they're like, Rosanna, like that. <laughs> so. Yeah, um, Karina's from the South and her mum, she just puts a spin on, she's like, it's like, these guys will say, like, Ali, but then she'll be like, Ali? It's like a really, like, really Southern way of saying it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Funny ones I like to say are, like, wor- any word that ends in, like, E-R, like. Yeah. Well, a good one is like, if we said like, hey y'all, I'm Rosanna. I play for the Melbourne Tigers, like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, 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 that's one word I, um, that's one word I taught. Like everyone says Melbourne. Yeah, Melbourne. Like Yeah, and I'm like, okay, so just say it like bin. Yeah. Melbourne. And they say like tiger. And then it's like, yeah. no, replace tiger. the E-R with an A-H and you've got yeah. it. Tiger. <laughs> But uh, both of you, thank you so much for getting up your time to join us. It's awesome having both of you on the show. Uh, hopefully, uh, we get to have a chat with you uh, a bit later on in the year and uh, hopefully uh, to um, see how the uh, the TikTok side of things is going, uh, most importantly, because uh, you won't be playing any basketball between now and then. Um, but obviously, hopefully, uh, you can get back on the basketball court uh, as a team, um, hopefully sometime down the track. Yeah, thank you very much for having us. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. No worries. And that's uh, Ellie and Rosie there joins from the Dartmouth uh, Women's Basketball Team. Of course, uh, as we mentioned, both of them from Melbourne and Newcastle. Of course, uh, if you want to uh, support the team uh, throughout, well, obviously not this year, but uh, into next year in particular, of course, for the 2021-22 season, of course, you can follow them on the website and, of course, on the social media um, by just uh, Googling Dartmouth Women's Basketball. There's more on the Smash Sports Show right after this. Don't go away here on the Sunday edition. <laughs>